one of the things that we use quite a bit on on jobs that we're doing whether it's building roads or clearing ground or whatever it might be is we use the heck out of this army dump truck and everybody asks about the army dump truck where'd you get it how did how can i get one where can you get them how much do they cost what size are those tires there's always questions about the army dump truck i thought i would take a minute and tell you where this army dump truck came from not very many people know that i spent a whole bunch of time in the army as a combat engineer part of that time i spent in the charlie company 1457 combat engineers battalion and they had a bunch of these trucks before i got in they had been deployed to kuwait overseas and they took a bunch of these trucks with them when charlie company came back they brought back a whole bunch of these trucks and after spending a year and a half in iraq they they came back they were just beat they shipped them back which i'm not sure probably cost them ton of money thanks uncle sam but they shipped them home and once they got them home they inventoried them and said hey uh let's just sell these and so they put a whole bunch of them up for sale and i said hey i whew, i'd like one of those i i think it would be really cool to own one and so i bought one of these it didn't come with these tires these tires are an upgrade i went went looking for military surplus stuff it needs needs a new steering wheel and it needed new tires and i wanted these super singles so instead of having dual rear wheels it's got just a single rear wheel but it's a great big massive tire these tires also have run flat donuts inside which means if you get a flat tire if something happens you can go down on the donut you're only going to be able to do about 20 or 25 miles an hour but you could still limp this thing home or get it off the road out of the way where you could get it fixed up it's a six by six it's it's in six wheel drive it's got three tires turning all the time which makes it kind of a pain for driving around town but it it does awesome out in the mud whatever you can put on it it will haul which is why the sides are kind of short and the box looks small but it's designed that it's supposed to be idiot proof that you can just throw on as many as many stumps as you want as much dirt as you want and you're never going to be able to overload it so i've had this truck quite a long time I've, I've really enjoyed it when i first bought it i bought it in in utah and i drove it to idaho i thought this will be so much fun i'll put some gas in it and i'll just run it up the road and it'll be wonderful that was the longest month one day i have ever lived this thing only does about 45 or 50 miles an hour it sounds like you're in a controlled explosion between the motor and the gears there's no such thing as an insulated cab or anything it, it is like riding on the front of a locomotive the tires the suspension is super stiff you're bouncing up and down going down the highway now everybody passing you is waving and thumbs up and it's great but you are driving about half the speed of everybody else and people are constantly going past you it it took me 20 something hours to get from utah to idaho So after driving 20 something hours, I had, I had blown out a tire. It wasn't meant for that kind of asphalt long use. That tire might have, who knows how old it was. It might've been dry rod or whatever, but I had a flat tire, put me down. It put, put the whole truck down on the rim. I lost the tire, I lost the rim. And that was just from the time I realized that we were going flat to the time I could get to an exit, get off the exit and get pulled over. I had destroyed the tire and destroyed the rim and there I was on the side of the road. What I instantly found was that in moving this truck from Utah to Idaho is that it, it requires a, a very special set of tools. It doesn't have regular air nozzles. It, the nuts and bolts, the tools that it takes to turn a lug nut on this is a very special tool. It took finding a lot of specialty people to 
find the tire, find a rim, get the right tools, get a tire back on it, and keep going. It took almost three days to get this thing from Utah to Idaho, and um, it, it, was, it was a great adventure, had a good time. I've moved it since then, put it on a low boy semi and had it had it shipped. It was it was a lot of money, but it saved me a lot of time and a lot of wear and tear on the truck. It doesn't get used all the time. It is a lot of fun. It's not very effective. If we had a six wheel drive haul truck, a cat 730 haul truck, a wiggle truck, we could haul twice as much material. We could go a lot faster. We'd have a lot higher production. And for cleaning up a pile of stumps or hauling a load of trees it's really convenient to be able to just load it up and short haul especially on sites that are five acres plus this truck gets a lot of work done if you are doing work or if you need a good dump truck i can't say enough good about an m817 six by six they are fantastic we, we absolutely love it. I don't know what we would do without it. So one of the one of the things I really like about this truck, I really like the size of these tires, and these are way oversized, but they give us a ton of clearance. But more importantly, is they're really, really, really fat tires. And it seems like wherever I can take the excavator, I can take this six-wheel drive truck with these big tires on it. When it used to have the smaller, skinnier tires on it, it was a bit of a problem. It would get stuck in places, those pizza cutters would cut down into the mud it would get high centered but I just haven't had that problem since we put these big super single wide tires on this truck you can see this this tire sits almost 50 inches tall which is which is huge for a tire especially considering we didn't have to lift it and then it's it's the tread the tread itself is 14 inches wide it is a huge tire and again they've got the run flat donuts in it so even if we had a flat tire if we lost air pressure it would sit down on that donut that's around the rim and we could limp at home or wherever these tires were a lot of money up front i would say these tires are see they're about 600 bucks 600 seven, six or seven hundred dollars a piece maybe not that much 600 something like that they were expensive we we bought six of them for the truck and then they had an extra two and I said throw let's throw those in if I ever have to go find if I ruin one tear one up or one one shreds on a job somewhere I'll never be able to find one so so we ended up buying eight tires and I've kind of set them aside and hopefully we don't need them but if we do we've got them and and we could swap out a tire I probably need to do a better job of rotating the tires changing out the front steering tires swapping them with the rears the, the problem is we just don't use the truck that much. If I had a big job, I would probably do that. Um, we've got a couple of jobs coming up this year that have, there's some long road jobs. We're gonna be trucking back and forth, hauling slash material, hauling in rock, doing those types of things. I probably rotate the tires before we get started and that way, and then you know maybe at the end of the job, rotate again. That'll, that'll help even the wear on the tires around the truck so we don't just wear out the front steering tires and will spread out the wear and tear the dump bed on this particular truck is not very high and i've had a lot of people say hey why don't you why don't you weld up the sides so you can haul more material yes that's probably a good idea and i think if it was just me maybe that would make sense but a lot of times uh, i've got the guys loading it or i've got somebody else driving it or whatever the case may be I just feel better knowing that there's there's a limited amount of material that can go in the back of this truck and that we're not going to get into trouble either stacking it too high, changing that center of gravity and, and having an accident or hurting the suspension by putting too much weight on it. So yes, we could probably get more on here and it'd probably just be fine. I figured, hey, it's just not worth the risk. Let's just leave the lower sides 
fill the whole thing up till it spills over the side and that's plenty it it's my guess is when we load this thing with dirt we're probably putting eight yards me seven and a half eight yards is what i'm guessing is going in the back of this truck which compared to to most dump trucks seven or eight yards is not very much at all but being able to throw stumps in there that just fall out, being able to pile slash in the back that just falls out, that doesn't get hung up, that doesn't get caught on a, on a, on a door gate or on the side walls or something. There's some real value in it, being able to just throw in seven or eight yards of dirt or rock or whatever it is and haul it up the road and pile it up with slash up over the top of the cab and haul that wherever it needs to go and not worry about stuff getting hung up in the bed of the truck. Mm -hmm.